Last year's motor after the event, uh, after the finals and after our stop in New Orleans, uh, the motor has got some abuse on it from the season, so we figured we'd pull it apart, check everything out, and probably do a rebuild on it. Upon pulling it apart, we noticed all the cracks in it, and at that point, pretty much just kind of have to write off the block. RVs are kind of known for having some cracks between coolant passages to the head stud threading on the block side itself. Luckily, the, the crankshaft, the rods and pistons, all that looked in a great condition and still usable for another block that we can build for, for this season. So we're just going to be short uh, a block, but we can find another block and we'll only be into a rebuild with a set of bearings and some rings and a little bit of machine work for the block. Not too much of a setback, but with RB parts in the States, it's a little hard to get a hold of some of the things when you need them, especially if you need them by a certain time limit. start the season off with was actually my spare from last season that uh, pretty much just sat in my trailer all year. It's the same exact build as what I was running last year. It's even actually the same head, which is the different uh, short block. This motor is going to be at the same power, run the same size Garrett Turbo. It's going to be a 3582 and we're going to be running it at about 30 to 34 pounds of boost. So that'll put us right back where we were at just at the 700 wheel mark. RB I kind of actually fell into uh, coming into Pro-Am. It wasn't really ever planned. I mean, the motor was actually one of the guys that work here, actually my crew chief, uh, Ant's engine that he was going to put into an old Datsun Z car. So we ended up throwing that engine in it. Um, now after two seasons of being on it, and even with a cracked block and being as reliable as it was and making its full power all the way up till I pulled it apart was awesome. So RB is going to be something I think I'm going to stick with for maybe another few years and potentially maybe look for something else unless I can find maybe some RB30 blocks to try and get some displacement up. And the car spins out to about 8200 RPM and because the RB doesn't make as much torque as the other uh, competitors' engines with uh, the larger displacement 2Js or with the V8 cars in FD now, I've got to keep uh, the RPMs up a lot higher than the other guys to keep in my power band. The nitrous obviously helps to keep the turbo and spool and keep it going. I was kind of nervous about it at first. Once we saw the numbers in the dyno and the, the power graph and, and what it did for the motor, it was, I was stoked on it. Uh, as far as Ant goes, for my side of the program being, it's me and Nate. We're together as a team for sure, but there is specific things that our crew is kind of divided on to, to finalize in the cars. I mean, he was there helping all of us, you know, scrape the car and get it ready for paint, and down to visualizing the how we're going to run turbo lines, coolant lines, radiator lines, what fittings we're going to need, uh, pretty much all the little fine details of stuff as far as like the engine goes and stuff like that. Um, Ant was kind of our guy that was in charge of, of that stuff, part of the build. We're almost caught up. <laughs> we're only like a month or two back. <laughs> so with my car, we're a little bit behind schedule as far as getting all the fab work and stuff done and then to try and have to plan out powder coating. We just knew that we wouldn't have the time to do it with the deadline coming. So luckily in-house, Jams has is, is always been a fan of painting. He actually painted my car last year that came out amazing. We knew that weather was coming and we had to get it done today to meet our deadlines. 
So we kind of had to, you know, reach out to him again to kind of stick him to the job of, uh, of painting the, the new shell. And <laughs> Just the bottom. Painting. painting was actually, a, it was a huge nightmare. I mean, we didn't have a rotisserie in house, so we had to get uh, creative in order to get the bottom of the car painted, being that we've already scraped off all the undercoating and all that. So we, uh, we kind of fastened the chassis up to our, our forklift that we have here in house to kind of lift it up on one end so the ant can get to the back side and bottom side of it to get the paint laid down on the car. For the conditions that we paint in here, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing how, how some of the cars came out, especially last year's car. For the interiors of the car and the underneath of the car, we don't really care to go for anything super flashy, super bright, super colorful. Um, just something that we can physically look at and detect either leaks or uh, something spraying on it. So we use like the business gray because it's a lighter gray color. Usually when it gets wet, it kind of gets a bit darker so you can see spatter and spots. So that way we uh, can, you know, hopefully find the, the problem before it becomes an issue on track. Where we're at at this point is once the car was uh, finished painted, we had already had everything pretty much in the car when it was unpainted and test fitted as far as the interior parts, the chassis parts underneath the car with suspension, the engine bay, pretty much everything had been uh, test fitted and a bracket made if it needed it, uh, a tab welded onto the car if it needed it. So it was just a matter of kind of putting the car together once it was done with paint. But once the car was painted and we're clear for the final assembly, that's when things really picked up speed as far as the build went. Being around the cars for so long, at that point we can appoint different positions of the car for us all to work on. At that point, it's pretty much game on as far as just bolting everything onto the car and go. We can have Bub and Ant working on getting the engine and transmission together and get those in the car while I'm working on the other side of the car. And then at the same time, we have Tommy working on fitting uh, rear bash bars to the car and have JT welding on uh, wastegate dump tubes and intercooler piping once the engine's in the car. 